My Silicon Valley investor is back for another search and analysis. Kareem, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. Gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. As always, I am your host, James Wise, and of course, behind the scenes, capturing it all, we got my guy, Tommy. Now, on today's show, uh, we have my client, Kareem. Kareem is from Silicon Valley. Uh, Kareem has bought a ton of real estate from me. Um, thank you for that, Kareem. Kareem is uh, doing a 1031 exchange, and he uh, is getting towards the end of his 1031 exchange. So he's got $125,000 left on this 1031 exchange, and he needs to get two more properties. You wanted me to find him two more. He might buy one. He might buy both, depending on how he wants to work it. Uh, he's been using some of his 1031 funds as down payments. He's been using some of his 1031 funds to just pay for everything cash. So he set the budget for me here at $125,000. Uh, with this last thing he needs to identify, he needs got to do this quick. Uh, as I talk to you guys right now today, you know, a lot of you guys are watching this video for the first time. It's probably, I don't know, I'd have to say November, maybe, maybe even October, October, November, or December, depending on how everything shook out. But as I talk to you right now, as I'm filming this, I should say, it's actually September 5th, and Kareem needs to have identified the properties for the 1031 by September 13th. So we're up against the gun here, Tom. We only have uh, eight days, okay? Uh, and Kareem, for this uh, particular property, you are looking for something fully occupied. You don't want to spend any money up front. You want to stretch these 1031 funds as far as possible. And uh, I went back and forth with you, and we spoke a little bit because uh, at first, you know, the last time we did an analysis for you, we were targeting B only. Um, this time you wanted to open it up, get a very wide search. So you are open to B, C, and D. Um, and the two properties I found for you was a side-by-side C-class duplex and a D-class quad. But the quad is very interesting. Uh, a, the cash flow is insane. And B, I really like the neighborhood. Uh, Tom, what do you think, man? Do you want to do the quad first or should we start things off with the duplex? See the quad first. The quad. That's my guy Tommy, guys. Going big. All right, let's see here. We will start it with the quad, as per my man Tommy. Okay, so starting things off here with the D-class quad, guys. 3355 three, five, West 43rd, Cleveland, Ohio, 44109. This sucker is listed for $119,900 by a Keller Williams office. They did not give us... Much to go uh, go on. There's the outside. Just a big, big, huge-ass large apartment building. Another picture of the outside. And that's it. That's all you get, right? That's all, that's all you get. Uh, the rent roll is pretty solid, though, guys. That's what attracted me to this, Kareem. The rent roll. Let's get into that. Unit 1, that's a four-bedroom unit, 700. Unit 2 is a three-bedroom unit, 650. Unit 3 and Unit 4 are both two ones, and the rent for those is $605.50. So all told, Kareem, you're bringing in $2,500 a month. That would be a scheduled rent of $30,000 a year. Let's see what the agent from Keller said. Turnkey 4 unit in Clark Fulton neighborhood. Good returns at this property that was brought back to life in the last five years. Exterior parking dedicated to tenants, new furnaces, all new electric and plumbing. So according to him, uh, it's got good bones. Now, the rent, that's insane, right? The rent's super high, and it's got good bones. Let's just jump right into the numbers real quick, because I, I really want to talk about the risk 
risk analysis in the neighborhood because that's what's really important, right? It doesn't take a genius for you to understand that if like all things being equal, if like you're getting like high quality tenants and you can buy a property for 119,900 and the rents are going to be $30,000 a year, that's a goddamn home run. Um, but that's not the full story, right? We got to get into why you're able to purchase this at such a high cap rate. Why are the paper returns going to be so high? So let's go through the numbers quickly. 2,500 bucks a month coming in. Repairs and maintenance, we're going to anticipate 125. Vacancy and non-payment, we're going to anticipate 125 a month. CapEx, even though we got newer mechanicals, right? We got new electric, we got new plumbing, we got new furnaces, according to the listing agent. But we're still going to calculate 125 a month because all of these things, they have a life expectancy on them, okay? If the furnaces are new, we got 30 years. But now you're gonna have to replace those, and they're gonna be about three thousand dollars a piece. So that is gonna be a total of twelve grand. Hot water tanks, if we got four, that's gonna be four grand uh, every fifteen years because you obviously you have four hot water tanks, and they usually cost about a thousand bucks to replace. Roofs, they're gonna last you thirty years. Uh, this is a flat roof. See this? It's a flat roof. We don't have any indication of how old this roof is. Typically, on these flat torch down roofs, what people usually do. Uh, is they just layer them over and over and over. And you could get probably 50, 60 years out of a roof like this. Uh, these are kind of costly roofs, though, just so you know. Like, this is not going to be like a $7,000 roof. This is probably like a 20, uh, I would say probably a $20,000 roof. we got to see how old that roof is. So that's something the inspector's going to do. I doubt it's like a new roof. I bet you it's a roof that uh, was just put on there and they just layer the tar over and over. So what the inspectors can do, you know, they could tell you, like, you know, where it's at. If it's been layered over and over for the last 30, 40 years, you know, eventually someone's going to have to pull all of that off and start over, and that'll cost about 20 grand. You have to do that because you can't just keep going up forever because eventually the roof will be uh, too heavy for the structure. Um, so that's why we're going to, you know, go ahead and pencil in a $1,500 capital expenditure budget for the year. Taxes, 253 a month. Insurance, 80 bucks a month. Kareem, you already know this for everyone else. Uh, we have an insurance company, so we can provide you quotes. We try to get you guys the cheapest quotes. It's all about the bottom line. We handle real estate investors' needs. We're not out here, you know, driving folks around in our cars, trying to sell them suburban houses for two and a half kids and a dog, white picket fence, bullshit like that. That's not what we do. We sell money here. We deal with the rental property business. So because of that, we started our own insurance company because we know you guys only care about one thing, man. You care about the spreadsheets. You care about the numbers. You care about the ROI. So we're not going to try to get you up you know, personal property riders, crap like that. What we're going to do, we're going to shop it around to all the providers, get you the best possible quote. Like this building, we run this through Foremost, one of the cheapest in the nation, okay? They'll insure pretty much any rental property, very, very cheap prices, you know, landlord policy. We're going to give a high liability, at least 300 k because if somebody shoots somebody or somebody falls down the steps, you know, you as the landlord, we're going to protect you. But other than that, we keep everything to the minimum. We should be able to insure this thing for around 80 bucks a month. Uh, beyond that, other expenses, Kareem, you know, normal expenses. I'm anticipating on average 75 bones a month for that water sewer. So that's taking us to 300. We got to cut the grass. That'll be 44 a month. We don't cut it all 12 months. Obviously, it gets cold in Cleveland, but it averages out to 44 a month because it's a total cost of 528 a year. We usually cut it about 16 to 18 times. Uh, rounding out the expenses, 250 bucks a month for property management fees. My most favorite expense ever. You got to pay the man. So with our $2,500 a month scheduled gross income or, you know, 30 G's a year, you're going to spend 1177 a month on average. Some months will be better. Some will be worse. This is D class. So it's going to be kind of like a roller coaster at times. That's going to leave you, though, with thirteen twenty-three dollars or 14371 a year. Going deeper, if we finance this sucker, well, first of all, just so you know, that's a 12 cap. And if we finance it, you're going to need to put down $29,975. Leaves you with an $89,000 mortgage. Your mortgage is cheap, four fifty-five dollars a month. So after you pay your mortgage, you should be scheduled to make, on average, eight sixty-eight a month or... 8900 a year, which is a 29.7% cash-on-cash return. 
Now, if I just ended the video right there, you'd be like, well, screw it. I don't even want to look at the duplex later, 29.7% uh, cash on cash return. What's there to say? Let's buy, 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 buy. Not so fast. Not so fast, Kareem, right? The reason you typically um, go towards C and B class is the risk is lower, right? <clears throat> this is very much a D class neighborhood, right? Um, as far as the rents go, I understand that one of the uh, units in there was like 550. There was two bedrooms. The other one was 600. So I guess, yeah, market rent. You got 600 for both of those. You could probably even get those up to like 650. Uh, the four bedroom, you know, maybe we can get it up, maybe not. The three bedroom, maybe we can get it up, maybe not. None of these tenants uh, appear to be on Section 8. In my opinion, you roll with these tenants as they are. And when there are turnovers, I think you got to go Section 8, man. Um, so we could probably get those rents even higher than the 2500 Like, we might be able to get the four bedroom on a Section 8 voucher, maybe up to like eight. Three bedrooms, 750 And the two, two, two bedrooms, maybe 650 700 Um but it's not really about uh, the increase in rent here. You, you go on the Section 8 voucher in a neighborhood like this because, dude, the, it's just a risky neighborhood, right? Like, you know, we're factoring in uh, 125 a month for that vacancy and non-payment of rent. You know, vacancy, non-payment of rent, you know, evictions, they're a very real part of D-class investing. Like, you're going to have evictions. I can't tell you if it'll be one a year at this property one every two years it, it's gonna happen though some years we might roll super good and you're gonna just pile in the cash but some years we might evict a tenant you know in one month and then four months later my team contacts you hey we're evicting another one uh, you know we don't know these particular tenants you know a lot of investors when they're buying these properties you know they're ready to buy them they always want to go like from the seller and be like okay we need to verify that the tenants have all already paid their rent, yada, yada. Are they good tenants, blah, 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 blah. Well, what, what seller in the world is going to be like, oh, yeah, these tenants? No, these tenants fucking suck. These are the worst fucking tenants ever. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm selling this property because these fucking tenants are horrible and they don't want to pay me rent and I don't want to deal with it anymore. I don't think a seller is going to tell you that, right? So uh, oftentimes, you know, the sellers are going to paint a rosy picture for you. And it's up to you as the investor to understand, you know, what you're going to get into. And that's why you have me. That's why you get these MLS analysis. You know, if we contacted that seller and he's like, yeah, the tenants are great. They're the best tenants in the world. Yeah, dude, I talk to hundreds of sellers a year. Every freaking seller I talk to, uh, they always tell me that they got these special tenants. <laughs> dude, it's, it's the market. It's the neighborhood. I've dealt with thousands upon thousands of tenants. I comprehend what we're getting here with four D-class tenants. I know more about these tenants than the sellers themselves probably do because I've dealt with more uh, D-class tenants than they have. Um, you're not probably, you're probably not, you know, going to acquire this property with four superstar tenants, dude. I'm sure they're pains in the ass. And if I had to guess, if we took this thing over, um, four tenants that Holton Wise didn't screen in place, I would anticipate you'll probably evict at least one of them in the next 12 months. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, but that said, when you do evict them, what you want to do, man, you want to go in, refresh the unit, put in premium upgrades, and then max out the rentability with the Section 8 voucher. On top of that, max out the chance you're going to get that rent consistency and, you know, reduce your vacancy and your turnovers and your evictions as much as humanly possible. It's pretty hard not to pay your rent when the government's covering it. So that is the strategy you want to input. So don't just get blinded by the 29.7% because you're not going to hit that number every year. Some years you'll hit it. Some years you'll hit it even higher than that. But other years, it'll be tough. So you're going you're gonna to deal with some problems. So remember that. But going forward, I think it makes the most sense to go Section 8. And there's one other reason that I chose this property for you, and that is the location, believe it or not. Now, I, I know I just told you why Section 8's tough, um, but this, this is super important, okay? This is, like, extremely important. Let me pull this up. Okay. Now, Kareem, <coughs> this... This is your property right here, all right? This is your property right here. This is super important, okay? What this is, this is Metro Health. Now, obviously, as you can see, it's very, very close. It's just like, you know, one, two, three, four, five. It's a six-block walk, so you can walk to that, right? So if you're walking your dog or whatever, it's right there, right in the neighborhood. I want to show you the... Street View. That is Metro Health. Metro Health is one of the bigger healthcare 
businesses in the Cleveland market. If you're looking at Cleveland from afar, folks, uh, Cleveland is a healthcare hub. That is like one of our biggest industries out here. Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, Metro Health are our big three. So this right here is the campus uh, of Metro Health. And I will put a link to what I'm about to tell you in the show notes below. But recently, Metro Health, these guys right here, what they have done is they have committed to investing $1 billion. That's B, not M, not $1 million with an M. That's $1 billion with a B. $1 billion they are going to invest in the surrounding Clark Fulton neighborhood, which is where your property is. So if you're looking at uh, this investment, right? You're looking at a D-class property in this D-class neighborhood, a D-class property in this neighborhood, right? Both D-class properties are going to come with their own sets of risks. Hopefully, the price is set up in a way that it makes up for those risks, which we have here because we just ran the paper returns, and we're showing a 12 cap and a almost 30% cash on cash return. So it makes sense to go after the investment. It makes sense to deal with the risk of the low-quality neighborhood because, A, we comprehend the neighborhood and we have a strategy. We know that if we go Section 8, we're going to reduce a lot of those risks. A lot of those problems that investors face, which lowers the market demand for these high-risk properties, we know how to combat that with strategy because you got Holton Wise. you got us. you got the biggest dogs in this market. That's what we do, right? We run a huge portfolio of these types of properties, these types of tents. we got thousands of these properties, right? We have sold over $150 million of this stuff, so, so we know what we're doing. So you have us in your corner, uh, people that know how to handle this. Like any, you know, just random... Uh, new landlord off the street might be attracted to these because of the numbers. And if they got to self-manage, they're like, holy shit, this is some tough shit. These are tough people to deal with. And if you don't think that's the case, folks, in the show notes below, I want you to watch some episodes I've linked to of my show, The Tenants from Hell Show. Uh, watch a few of those and then come back to me and tell me if uh, that's what you anticipated it would be like. So that is one thing, right? So if you're looking at D-Class, you got to make sure it's priced right. Uh, for the level of risk and the level of headache and the little problems. And then on top of that, make sure you have the right team in place, which you do, and the property's priced correctly. And then the second thing is you got to look at the future of that neighborhood. So if we're just looking at two random D-class properties, you know, both priced correctly, take care of all that, yes, we know how to handle both of those properties. Well, I wouldn't want our, just a D-class property in a D-class neighborhood that's planning on being D-class forever. If I can get one in a D-class neighborhood where one of the biggest industries in the entire market has committed to spending a billion dollars increasing uh, the quality of that neighborhood. I mean, that's great, man. You go on right now, you know, we deal with the, the stuff. Eventually, we'll probably turn over, you know, the whole building in the next few years. We'll get the entire building running on Section 8 so you have a very consistent income stream. And then who knows, you know, five, ten years from now, that might be a super, uh, you know, gentrification hotspot. You know, that could be the next Tremont, Ohio, City, Gordon Square. On top of that, too, let me uh, get out of the Google Street View. <laughs> me out of this Google Street View here. Let's try that again. When people talk about the Cleveland market, right, and they talk about gentrification and the hot spots, okay, Ohio City, Tremont, and Gordon Square, guys, those are the biggest areas. Well, here's the Clark Fulton area right here, right? Here's Clark Fulton, okay? So this is where your property is. Here's Metro. Well, guess what? Tremont's right there. Ohio City's right there. Detroit Shoreway's right there. So you got gentrification spot. Gentrification spot, gentrification spot, downtown. Well, you are right there, man. You are right there. So, you know, logic would dictate you got gentrification happening here, here, and here. Well, the very next area is going to be right here, which is exactly where your property is. So there's a lot going on, and that's why, Kareem, I have identified this as a property that could work for you because it maxes out your cash flow. We get four income checks for only one mortgage. It's fairly cheap. You only need to spend $30,000 to acquire it. And down the road, I think there could be an incredible increase in value. So uh, let's go to a quick commercial break, and then we will get into the second property I have identified for you. Property management is a lot more than just placing tenants and collecting rent. Who you work with can be as or even more important than the properties themselves. 
With over 60 years of cumulative experience, the principles of Evergrow Property Management have one of the most tried and tested property management businesses in the Indianapolis, Indiana market. Armed with the latest technology and a full range of property management services, including property evaluations, tenant screening, rent collection, maintenance, legal compliance, and eviction services. Evergrow Property Management is the top property management choice of rental property owners, turnkey providers, and real estate agents in the Indianapolis, Indiana market. Visit evergrowpm.com for more information. Holton Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business, who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to HoltonWise.com today. All right, Kareem, welcome back. We are going to jump right into your second property here. And this one, um, this is a C-class property, and uh, it is a side-by-side -side duplex listed by another Keller Williams office. I don't think it's the same one as the last property. We got a ton of Keller Williams offices in the market. Here is the front of it, just a big, huge, classic side-by-side -side duplex, uh, three bed, one bath, each unit. Let's just scroll through the pictures. There's not very many, and they all look like shit. Uh, yeah, as you can see. Uh, front yard, landscaping looks like fucking shit. Uh, <laughs> the sidewalk, that looks like shit as well. Um, neighbor's house also looks like shit. Uh, that guy's house, that's not too bad, but that guy's house is pretty shitty. Um, let's see here. There's the backyard. Holy crap, that looks like shit, of course. Uh, another shot, also equally shitty. And then back to the front. Oh, cool, we got some cardboard and a fan in the window. That also looks like shit. And a freaking sweet satellite dish from, like, the 60s or something like that. So the property looks like fucking crap. That might be why it's been on the market 110 days. Uh, also, it could have been on the market 110 days because, in my opinion, I don't think the agent is marketing it very well. I mean, we just got five shitty-ass photos. They look like shit. That's scaring people. Uh, on top of that, they didn't really say much. Don't miss out on this amazing investment opportunity. Duplex, both units have three bedrooms and one full bath. Close to shopping, restaurants, entertainment. Exterior has new aluminum siding that was recently painted. Updated furnaces and water tanks. Updated bathrooms. There's some good nuggets in there. We have updated bathrooms. I don't know how long it's been since they've been updated. Uh, I would imagine they're not super beautiful based on the fact that everything outside looks like fucking shit. Uh, the furnaces and the hot water tanks, though. Those are updated, so hopefully they're not 20, 30 years old because those are big ticket items. 3K each furnace, 1K each hot water tank. Furnaces last 30 years, hot water tanks last 15. Usually if something's at least 15 years old, people don't claim updated in the listing. Um, so <clears throat> in my opinion, not the best marketing. That's why we got 110 days on the market. On top of that, let's look at the chart here. Each unit, 3-1. Six seventy-five a month, thirteen fifty a month, sixteen thousand two hundred dollars a year. Uh, pulling up the chart real quick. I'm not even going to go through these line by line. I just want you to see them all. Uh, same, you know, Kareem. This is not your first rodeo. You understand uh, what these numbers mean. We we look at this. We have a total, you know, monthly expense estimate of seven fifty-six, an NOI of five ninety-four. Moving on to the next chart. Breaking it all down if you got a 30-year loan. It's a 7.9 cap. Your mortgage down payment is only going to be $22,475, which is going to lead you with a net cash flow after you pay off that $341 mortgage of $253 a month or $3,033 a year or a 13.5% cash on cash return. So currently, what do we have, right? We have a C-class property that is projected as it currently states to do 13.5% on our money. That's not horrible, okay? That's not horrible. But based on the things that we've seen in the listing, right, the yard, it looks like fucking shit. We don't have, like, a very good marketing uh, presentation delivered to us by the listing agent. And all the neighboring properties, let me pull that up again, right? These neighboring properties, man, they, they are scaring folks, I think, right? Like, just... Nothing about this photograph right here speaks to, you know, the general public saying, like, this isn't just, 
you know, pure fucking garbage. But again, that's why you have me. That's why I have my expertise. I literally have thousands, thousands of tenants, thousands of front doors in these neighborhoods. This is very much a C-class neighborhood. And even though this thing looks like fucking shit, there is a ton of upside here. And I actually like this property a lot more than I like that quad. Let's get into why. Number one, okay, this is a side-by-side -side duplex. All things being equal, if you have the opportunity to pick up a side-by-side -side duplex versus an up-down duplex, you have to go with the side-by-side -side duplex every single time. Having a side-by-side -side layout is going to drastically reduce your turnovers, okay? With an up-down duplex, these are older properties. These properties are, you know, the majority of these properties, guys, these are built in, like, the 1920s, okay? So these are all almost 100 years old. So, you know, they weren't built with the normal, you know, modern building code, okay? So these are kind of loud. And what we like to do to harden them to reduce your turnover cost uh, we always tell you guys, you don't want to put carpet in these units. You want to refinish those beautiful 100-year-old hardwood floors because in between all your turnovers, it's going to keep your turnover costs much lower. You spend a bunch up front, spend an extra few grand to make them beautiful. Then at the next turnovers, all you got to really worry about is painting and like patching little drywall holes. No big deal. You don't have to worry about the floors. You don't have to spend, you know, 1500 two grand replacing your carpet. But there is one little downside to that, and that is sound, right? Sound does travel. Sound does carry. Um, it's really never been anybody's dream growing up. Like, you know, everybody watching this right now, did you ever dream one day that you could live uh, in Kareem's duplex? I, I doubt it. I don't think anybody as a child dreams that they'll one day live in Kareem's duplex with some asshole above them making noise. So because of that, just part of the, the nature of the beast with this business is when you have duplexes, the downstairs and upstairs tenants, periodically they will fight about noise. The upstairs tenant is pissed that the downstairs tenant's always saying they're making noise every time they walk to the bathroom or walk to the kitchen. Downstairs tenant's like, ah, they're dancing on the floor up there. Their kids are running around, blah, 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 blah. So you will run into that stuff. And, you know, every once in a while some people move out prematurely because they just can't get along with their neighbor. It's just part of the business, right? The the fact that we're reducing the cost so much at these turnovers outweighs, uh, you know, th that additional cost. So it still makes sense to get rid of that carpet. You know, if you uh, ran a few duplexes with the hardwoods here for 15 years, and then you ran a few over here for 15 years um, without the carpet. So we got hardwoods, we got carpet, you know. At the end of the 15 years, theoretically, the ones with the hardwoods would perform better because you spent less on the turnovers. Um, that's at least what our data has shown uh, based upon our experience with all these properties. So it's not a perfect, uh, you know, there's never going to be a perfect option. There's never going to be an option that's just perfect all the way around. There's always going to be a give or take. But more or less, the best move is to get rid of the carpet, keep, keep the cost down, but you got, you know, you got the noise issue. With a side-by-side -side duplex, you can remove carpet so you keep those costs down, but you don't have someone literally living on top or below one another. They're literally side-by-side, -side, so you're always going to see a much longer tenancy on average out of side-by-side -side duplexes. On top of that, these are three-bedroom, one-bathroom side-by-side duplexes, not just two bedrooms. So the current rent, they are leaving so much money on the table, it's ridiculous. Six seventy-five a month for each unit. And that wasn't bad, right? You pick it up right now, you don't have to touch a thing, you don't have to do anything, you're going to make 13.5% on your money. That's not a bad deal. Other people are still scared off by, you know, what the property looks like outside. They're a little nervous. But I'm telling you, it's a solid C-class neighborhood, and we just go in there, we clean that up, right? Like... You know, the whole wise landscaping crew is going to be the next crew that takes over the lawn because you can't really put that on the tenants. You can't put on the tenants at all because who's going to cut the grass? They're both going to fight with each other. So you have to have your property manager cut the grass. So we'll handle the grass. We'll make that look a little bit better. Um, there's no point of sale in Cleveland, so you're not going to immediately be forced uh, to fix up the front of that house. One day, I think it would be a good idea for you to spend a little bit of money uh, getting the curb appeal a little bit better. Uh, but today is not that day. It doesn't really necessarily make sense to do it today. Uh, perhaps at your next turnover, because when one of these tenants naturally moves out, what we want to do, we want to go in there and we want to 
fix this thing up to the nines, man. We want to put premium upgrades in there everywhere. If we do that, because it's a side-by-side -side layout, they have upstairs, they have downstairs. Typically, they have their own basement, like separated by a big, huge concrete wall, so they don't have to share laundry facilities. That is very common in these side-by-side -side builds, which the tenants love, because it's another thing they fight about. They fight about the shared laundry. I would be lying if I told you guys uh, I've never had complaints that uh, one tenant was stealing the other tenant's girlfriend or wife's panties. Uh, we've Tom, how many panty stealers have we had? I think we... I feel like we've talked about this before, and we've talked about making the Tenants from Hell episode about the panty theft, but I don't think we've ever actually put that on the production board, have we? Talked about it many times. I don't think we've actually made a video fully through. Okay. That is something that we got to do, dude. Put that on our production board. I think the people are going to want to see the panty theft video. So we'll get the panty theft video out to you guys uh, one of these days. Hopefully, I would say Q1 2020. You think that's a good target? Mm -hmm. All right, Q1 2020, guys. The panty theft episode of the Tenants from Hell show. You heard it here first. That's going to come to you. So <sighs> panty theft aside, right? What you know? What that means, right? Another benefit: separate basements that leads to longer tenancy, higher rents. So, with all of that said, you give them a beautiful space, upgraded kitchen, upgraded bathroom, everything looking nice. Eventually, you come out here and you fix up this curb appeal. And you know, once we get these tenants with, that are attracted to the much nicer uh, look, they're going to pay a higher rent. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. You know, they're typically going to be a more high qualified tenant. And you won't just get some pure goddamn fucking savages just coming in here and doing this. Like, th what this shows me is the two fucking assholes living in this property are, are just fucking savages, dude. I mean, like, Kareem, I'm pretty sure if you walked outside to your yard, right, your yard's not going to look like that. So by doing, uh, you know, these repairs when these savages eventually move out, like, we'll still keep taking their money right now, though, because there's two savages both living there. Uh, if they're willing to pay six seventy five, and, you know, live in this shitty ass yard fine whatever we'll keep taking their 675 but when it comes time right for one of them to move out we're not going to put in another savage we're going to put in a nice high quality tenant we're going to get the high quality tenant by improving everything so making the insides beautiful cleaning up that curb appeal we do all of that you're going to take that rent from 675 a unit up to 850 a unit okay so we can go from 1350 a month all the way up to seventeen hundred a month. That is an additional three fifty a month, plus an additional forty two hundred. That you know, that's forty two hundred dollars a year is what I'm trying to say. And the cool thing is, pulling back up the chart, which goes over all of your expenses, like these random expense estimates. Just because we increased that uh, cash coming in on the top end, that's not going to increase these costs. So essentially, that three fifty or forty two hundred. That is more or less 100% profit all coming into your pocket. So long term, in my opinion, I think this thing is a cash cow, and I think people are missing the boat. I think they're seeing some cosmetic issues that they're afraid of, that they're scared of. They're seeing this backyard. You know, you're hearing me right now on my show telling you the people that live here are probably fucking savages because they are. I mean, dude, there's really no other way to slice it if – if this is how you have your yard and you're an adult human being, you're a fucking animal. You're a fucking savage. Um, but, guys, this is a newsflash for you. Fucking savages got to live somewhere, and they do pay their rent. I'm not saying you should want to have this be the experience for the rest of your life, but you can get into this right now, still make a little bit of money, and we'll naturally work them out and we'll get you a much better, higher quality person. And we'll improve this property, but at the same time, we'll improve your ROI, keep your ownership experience, uh, you know, much more low key. Because with this particular neighborhood, I'd venture to say you probably have one of the crappiest looking yards on the whole block uh, with this yard. The rest of the neighborhood, like this is, this is a, it's not the, a super high class neighborhood, but it's it's not D class by any means. So this is probably an eyesore for the neighborhood. So you you know typically you want to buy the crummiest house on the block. That's kind of real estate 101, right? Uh, so I just see a ton, a ton of value add opportunities here. Getting a $1,700 rent roll. I mean, at that point, $1,700 rent roll, dude, 
this duplex is worth a hell of a lot more than 89900 It's just going to take us some time to get there, but no reason for you to just remove everybody right away. Let's, let's keep collecting their money right now. You're not saving the world, and you're not out here making yourself any money by immediately throwing away 1350 in rent. Just let that happen naturally. One other thing uh, while I was looking up this property, too, I was doing a little bit of research. Um, I should just you know, show you, prove to you that the current owner is making some decent money off of this. This property was uh, purchased last. The, la the, the current owner, he's owned this since 2003, right? So that's 16 years, right? So the thing has definitely been kicking off cash. And he's obviously not taking great care of it, uh, but he's still bringing in a lot of money. So 16 years of ownership, that shows you that income has been pretty consistent for him. So <clears throat> that's everything I've got for you, Kareem. Uh, if anybody else is watching this, they're probably like, whoa. I don't think I've ever heard a realtor talk like that. that that's what we do here at Holton Wise TV, guys. Uh, this is 100% uncensored, unbiased, unfiltered show. Uh, we tell it like it is. So if this is the first time you have ever seen one of our shows, every other episode, all of our content, this is the type of just raw honesty you can expect. So do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button if you want to learn what the real estate investing business is like. This is real life, guys. I'm not going to stand up here on my show and tell you it's going to be awesome and tell you it's going to be easy because if it was super awesome and easy all the time, if all of your tenants were just great, wonderful people that paid you rent every single month on the first, they're like, hey, Mr. Landlord, here's my rent. I'm so happy to live in your house. If that's what the reality of this business was like, my company wouldn't exist. We are here to solve problems. This business will make you a lot of money, but there's a lot of work involved. It's very tough, and sometimes you got to battle to get that money, and that's what you hire Holton Wise for. That's what we do, and that's what this show is all about. It's showing you guys the realities. So if you're out there in other markets looking to get into this business on your own, you want to be the guys on the ground doing that stuff, I want to be able to give you guys the education that shows you what you got to put up with. And if you're somebody out there in Silicon Valley like my guy Kareem, you know, you're working your high-end Silicon Valley tech job. You're not really interested in being the guy dealing with some of these things. Uh, so we offer you guys a fully turnkey system, and that's what we do here. So if you want, go to HoltonWise.com, click on the Property Search tab. I'll show you real quick right here, Property Search tab. We have the Investment Properties for Sale show. That's where we sell you guys properties. Click on that. Subscribe to the mailing list every day at 1 o'clock. We're going to email you a property with a full video tour that you have the opportunity to buy. Or on top of that, if you want an even more in-depth and personalized experience, you click the MLS Search and Analysis Show, and you'll get a custom analysis, a custom search, just like I've done for Kareem here, where you tell me what you're looking to do. Like Kareem... In eight days, his 1031 is going to expire, okay? In eight days. He's got 125000 he needs to spend. He needs to identify properties in eight days. And, uh, you know, even though I'm the number one seller of rentals in Cleveland, I didn't have any properties in my Rolodex that were going to fit his needs. So he gave me his criteria, and I went out. I searched the rest of the Cleveland market. I searched listings from over 5,000 realtors, and I identified two properties that I think would work for him. One. The quad, pretty high risk. In my opinion, Kareem, if you only want to buy one, I would buy that duplex because it, it may have sounded to uh, you know a newer investor, a new person that was very harsh on that duplex, but that's just what it is. I'm just calling it what it is, man. A spade's a spade. Um, but I see incredible value from that duplex because, A, I already like the neighborhood. I think the duplex right now looks crummy, but I think that's an opportunity for you because it's listed at 89.9, but it's been on the market 110 days, right? And I don't think that it's being presented very well. So I think that's an opportunity for us to get in there and aggressively bid. Like it makes 13.5% with the current rents, but we can get it up to 1,700. And who's to say you have to pay 89.9 for it? It's been on the market 110 days. That smells like opportunity to me, man. I think we need to get in there and start the bidding at the high 70s. Like, let's start at 76, 77, 78 and see where we could land. If we could close this out at like $80,000, dude, I think you got a long-term cash cow on your hands. So, Kareem, shoot my team an email, sales at holtonwise.com, and let us know uh, if you want to buy one or both of these properties. And as we always do, my man, uh, we will handle the negotiations with the seller on your behalf, coordinate the inspections, appraisals, uh, everything else. Again, anyone tuning into Holton Wise TV for the very first time, do yourself a favor and smash 
that subscribe button. And while you're at it, go ahead and smash that like button. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holton Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches, FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit fshouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video, just like this one, to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.